But for Central Bahama, order that the documents to lie on the table. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, parliamentary colleagues, and those watching across land and breadth of the Bahamas. Good evening. As I rise to make my contribution to this mid-year budget, I want to start out by thanking the wonderful residents of Central Grand Bahama for their continued support and encouragement and send a shout out to my wife, Heather, and my daughters, Imari and Jasmine. I am forever grateful to represent the good people of Central Grand Bahama in this honored house, ensuring that their best interests are always at the forefront. They are hardworking Bahamian citizens who simply seek a happy and fulfilled life. Mr. Deputy, I'd like to send, out, send a shout out to <coughs> Ms. Mary Grant, um, as she continues to get well at home. Several condolences to Mr. Talmadge Pinder and family on the loss of his daughter, Claire. Uh, get well wishes to Ms. Joyce and Lewis as she recovers from a mild stroke. And also sympathy to Prescola Johnson on the loss of her husband, who will be funeralized this Saturday. Mr. Deputy, it is always a pleasure for me to share the news of the work we are doing in backyard farming, in a backyard farming program and the Central Grand Bahama Market Festival. This community center initiative is now going into its fourth year and continues to grow more and more. What we have unearthed in this experience is, is that there is a real interest in Bahamians wanting to eat healthier and have access to fresh produce. This initiative has also given residents from across the island the opportunity to engage with one another and support each other. Even more so, we have seen how proud these Bahamians are watching their tomatoes, bell peppers, eggplants, breadfruit plants grow and bear fruit. I invite all local, international, and international visitors, taxi and tour bus drivers to stop in and visit us at our market festival, and we will be having one this Saturday at the Royal Oasis Ground. I also invite my parliamentary colleagues and all Bahamians to get involved. Start your garden within your communities. I have found that most people will also rather support their neighbors by purchasing something that is of good quality, healthy, and affordable, as opposed to always going to the bigger markets. Mr. Deputy, we have distributed through the help of the leader the, the leader of, of, uh, of the Free National Movement, when he was the minister, hundreds of backyard farming kits to those persons who had the opportunity to start their backyard farms and on their properties. And we want to say how far that is going towards feeding our people. One of the challenges faced by farmers in this country is that it's difficult to afford to pay for fertilizers, seed, Seed, seedling, soil, pesticide, and other necessary items up front. So we try our best through community initiatives to support them in their efforts. This is how you empower Bahamians. I want to offer special thanks to the, to the trees that feed foundation for their partnership in supplying bearing trees to help us in our food security efforts. We know across the globe, as we watch inflation rise, any small movement towards food security in the Bahamas is a major step for our future. Yes, we are continuing to push the envelope on the issue to be prioritized. Before I go on, Mr. Deputy, I want to quickly again bring attention to the pharmacare matter. We're happy that the alarm was sounded, and now there's action on the site um, to manage and dispose of all of the raw materials that was there. It is, hope, it is hope that after all of the cleanup and necessary actions by the liquidators, that the air quality testing and groundwater testing will be done to ensure that the environment is safe for our people. I am not going to ever hear news about something that could affect my people and sit on it. If it's a matter that I need to raise in this place, I will raise it on behalf of my people. And I'm sad the Honorable I'm member, it, Honorable I'm member, there's now action. Honorable on member, the, the chair recognized the Honorable member for Golden Isles. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I wish to make it clear that throughout this process, we were in touch, we were on top of it, 
the member knows better. I mean, he knows this. He was a, he, he knows this. So I don't want him to be grandstanding and acting as if this is something that because of his cheerleading on the sidelines that caused this. He knows better. And I advise him, as I said earlier, he who knows better, do better. Thank you, Honorable Member. I'm glad you, you raised that matter. And like I said, the alarm was sounded. I got information from my constituents. I brought it to the floor, and attention is being given. I'm not pointing my finger. I'm happy that the matter is being resolved. What is the issue? I don't understand what the issue. I don't understand what the issue is. It's being resolved. It's being resolved. I said I'm grateful that it's being resolved. So what is the issue? I don't understand what is the point. What is the point? What is the point? You don't know, no, no, no. You were not always on top of it, Ma, Mr. Deputy. The, Mr. The, Deputy. The chair. He get a chance. Yeah, to, the chair recognized. What? He get a chance to report. Honorable no, members. No, you speak to the speaker, not me. Speak to the deputy. All right. The chair recognized the honorable member for Golden Isles. I will not permit him to get away with this. He knows better. He knows better. Please, you know better. Happy that is being resolved. I'll leave it at that. Mr. Deputy, we will continue to watch the matter. Mr. Deputy, on another point, I'd like to raise is something that has become again an issue for our local boarders in Grand Bahama. I'm being advised that there, there are still issues with them finding sheltered ramps to launch their boat and to also gain access to the land along the southern shores of Grand Bahama. We understand that this is how they feed their families. This is how they service the local restaurants and the general public. As a country that prides itself on keeping the commercial fishing industry just for Bahamian, as it is set out in the Constitution, why are we not giving these, these fishes more priority? This industry is another key factor in ensuring that Bahamians have food security. Yes. God has given us all the tools to survive on our own without having to, re to consistently rely on billions of food, billions of dollars of food being imported on an annual basis. Mr. Deputy, during my last capital budget allocation, portion was given to some of the boaters in the Hunters area to construct a ramp, a temporary ramp that will give them, allow them to gain access to the water, to fish and to feed themselves. During my next allocation at the end of March, if it's on time, God, God help us, a portion will also be given to fishers down in, in the Han Hill area to also construct a ramp that will allow them to get in and out of the water. Mr. Deputy, before I fully turn my attention to this budget debate, I want to alert the public, I want to alert the public that even though we have seemingly passed the worst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we must all remain vigilant. Recent report indicates that there has been a little slight uptick in the number of COVID cases, COVID-19 cases in New Providence and Grand Bahama. Please be cautious. Do not be afraid to pull out those masks in large crowds. Be careful because there's still a lack of adequate healthcare facilities on the island, and we must ensure that this matter does not get out of hand. It is serious. We should not take it lightly. Mr. Deputy, when the former government left office, this New Day administration met an economy on the uptick. They were gifted with an economy on the rebound. The f and administration took the country from a decade of no growth to a consecutive period of economic growth prior to Hurricane Dorian and the pandemic. We ensured that there was a strong pipeline of inward investment to, full, to fuel sustained economic growth. Uh, once the country was hit by the historic storm and global health crisis, we moved to implement several initiatives to keep the fiscal gains we had over the previous years. They met the cupboards full. The cupboards were stuck. Thanks to our vigilance and fiscal policies, we were at a global inflation rate of approximately 20%. The Treasury was in a good state. But less than three years into it, and the Bahamian people have witnessed a significant bleeding 
of its public funds. They can just see how the money is now being drained down the drain under this new administration. Mr. Deputy, I can unequivocally say that this budget does very little for the common Bahamian people and does not re reveal any new measures to help them. I believe this New Day government should be ashamed to flaunt their mishandling in such a bold way. Mr. Deputy, the Prime Minister said this is a budget for security and progress. But who, prog who progressing? Who is progressing? And who feels safe? Who's progressing? Who really feels safe in this country? Well, I'll wait for the answer. Is it their friends? I believe so. Is, is it their friends and family benefiting from the progress? Is it that they're just looking to advance self and legacy? It's OK. No response is needed at all. But I'll leave it out there. Mr. Deputy, they are continuing to fail the behemoth people, the behemoth people that deserve more. All we see are more hard times coming. We warn about the inflation and question when we should see relief. But once again, all we get is another budget with more glitz and glamour. The government's travel expenditure is just a picture of ultimate shame. The math is not mathing. I've said before, the New Day government is continuing their world tour. The Bahamian people are calling it a national disgrace. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of Bahamian money from the public purse being spent to spill again across the across the world. Like the missionaries, you know, those missionaries, they touch every corner. And that's what we're seeing nowadays from our, our politicians, touching every corner of the world. Can you imagine if that money actually went towards the many other challenges we are facing throughout, we are facing throughout this country? Like crime, social services, disability support, education, farming. Instead, we are paying for personal accolades and what I would, call, what I would term Bucket list trips. What does the Bahamian man, woman, and child get instead of access to quality food, shelter, and education? More billboards, more photo ops, more empty promises, and yes, more taxes. The Bahamian people need more relief. We simply can't catch a break. Mr. Deputy, the government brag about the addition of funds received by the Department of Inland Revenue through VAT. This was done on the back, on the backs of the poor, everyday Bahamian. Is this government finally willing to admit their missteps on VAT and take it back to the zero rating on breadbasket items, on insurance, on baby items? Or are they continuing, or are they too comfortable enjoying the sport of taxing the vulnerable? Mr. Deputy, as stated earlier by East Grand Bahama, the World Bank is projecting the Caribbean to grow by 4.1%, and the Bahamas is only expected to go by 1.8%. This is quite alarming that the Bahamas is growing much less than the rest of the Caribbean. Why? <coughs> According to our recent projections, our target growth, as we stated earlier, is 1.1%, down from the previously projection of five. Is that saying that the government is losing confidence in their ability to grow the economy? Why would you move from five to one? Thank you. Based on what I can see, this is certainly not a, uh, an ambitious projection. If we continue, Mr. Deputy, if we continue on this trajectory, the one that we are on now, we will completely wipe out the middle class. And we will end up, we will end up, we will end up in a rich man, poor man state. We will end up in a rich man, poor man state. We must deliberately seek to empower those like Uncle Lou in Angleston and Big Mary in Bainstown by reinstating initiatives like the over the hill development scheme that created tax free zones in New Providence, the East West initiatives in Grand Bahama, the tax free incentives in Abaco, Andes, and other islands. We need to go back. We can take the lazy, lazy way out and tax our people and use smoke and mirror tactics, or we can be creative and innovative and develop real plans for national growth and development. Mr. So Deputy, we have about the millions of tourists coming, the major developments all over. But the question is, 
How will we sustain this development if we do not empower our people? Why is the misery index still so high with all of these development that we are touting? Why isn't the common man feeling it the way they should? Let's look at some ways that we really can boost our economy and provide more opportunities and access to funding by our farmers and fishermen. Because if we do that, that's a way to really touch the common man. Mr. Deputy, ways that we can seek to generate revenue is that it is no secret, Mr. Deputy, that our family islands are grossly underdeveloped. As I said earlier, we are not taking advantage of our vast farming and fishing grounds. Yes, tourism is our main industry, but we should have learned our lessons from Dorian and the pandemic. During Dorian, the world came to our aid. During the pandemic, we had to fend for ourselves because everyone had to take care of their own business at home. It speaks to the fact that self-sufficiency is extremely important. We often hear, Mr. Deputy, about the WTO, or the World Trade Organization. Well, let's bring it home. Why don't we create a BTO, a Bahamas Trading Organization? Every island in this country, major island, have something to offer. We can aggressively seek to promote inter-island trading and travel. Look at the main strength and, and weaknesses or the main strength of each of our major islands. Acklands have cascarilla, bark, giant conks and lobsters, the largest you see anywhere. Grand Bahama, we have chicken, we have eggs, we have citrus, we have beef, pork. Long Island has mutton, fish, the straw work. Andres, oh yes we do. <laughs> Andres has fishing, Andres has fishing, farming, and Andres even have the world famous Chichani. Inago has salt, fish, and of course, you know, hush hush. Ilutra, we don't know what hush hush is, we're not going into detail. Ilutra has a pineapple. You know, the island school, pink sand and more. We have to deliberately find a way to create inter-island trading. But most importantly, we must make local tourism more accessible to Bahamians. That's very critical. Think about it, folks. People travel all the way from Japan, and we see the photos on Facebook, where they come all the way from Japan to visit the swimming pigs. And you know what? The majority of Bahamians has never seen them. Can't afford to get there. We must seek ways to make inter-island travel easier so that we can more promote domestic tourism. You know, the young people say often the Bahamas is not a real place. Well, we in the FNM always look at it in a realistic way. Bahamians want real tax reduced on health care. They want VAT and bread basket items back to zero rated. They want access to home ownership. They want education and a guaranteed future. They want national development. They don't want lip service. We will uphold our job as opposition to ensure that the government remains transparent and accountable. Mr. Deputy, I'll briefly turn to the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture. I'm always passionate when I speak to the work we do as a country with our youth, sports, and culture. Mr. Deputy, in 1995, we performed, and I was on the team, in Gothenburg, Sweden, under the banner of small country, great athletes. Because they were always wondering, what, how, what can we label, how can we label the Bahamas? The greatness that they are portraying. So we were tied with that banner. Small country, great athletes. Today, we continue to prove to the world that we are indeed a small country with the greatest athletes ever. I want to offer special congratulations to Devin Charlton, who shouted for the second time in less than two weeks World record well, in a month, a world record in the 60 meter hurdles. She is now the fastest person ever in the history of that event in the entire, in the entire globe, and that's commendable. And I'm happy to hear the minister, the member for Garden Hill, say that they will revive the sport policy so that we can adequately compensate Devon and others like her. And as we consider what she did, let us ensure that. We never forget this amazing, this amazing feat. And why it's important, when you think about it, Shikari Richardson from the United States, she just signed a deal with Nike, 
20 million dollars. Don't have to worry about financing for the rest of her life. Not a world record, but just because of who she is. And I, of course, they're more market driven, but we must find ways to really, <laughs> to really properly <coughs> reward our athletes. <laughs> Mr. Deputy, I would also like to congratulate the side opposite. I'm not, I'm, when it's time to give you props, I'll give it to you on, on appointing uh, Buddy Hill now as a new sports ambassador. He's joining the ranks of Rick Fox and my former teammate, Chris Brown. So again, it's a good thing. And I'll also like to congratulate Mr. Glenn Pratt, one of our renowned golfers. Mr. Pratt is now being inducted into, into the African American Golf Hall of Fame. Certainly the first for this entire region, and we must commend Glenn for all of his achievement. Mr. Deputy, I will never be humble in declaring that the Bahamas has some of the most talented athletes in the world, but I will continue to agitate that they are simply not supported enough. Help is still needed for Devon Robinson and other struggling golfers. History again, on February 24th, one Shannon Hanna made history by becoming the first Bohemian to earn a medal in wrestling by winning a bronze medal at the Pan Am Games. So we're doing it in track and field, doing it in golf, and now even in wrestling. As I stated before, the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture is the most underfunded ministry in the Bahamas. There is so much to do with very little resources. We need to redirect some of that traveling money towards Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Culture. This is a huge year in sports again. We just had the World Indoor Championship, the annual Crifter Games, the World Relays, and yes, the Olympic Games are coming. The ministers talk about the upcoming Paris game. Now is the time to increase our partnership with the government, the BOC, and the B3As. We need to see priority on funding. And while they say we over here haven't done anything, the largest grant given in the history of Olympic funding was granted to the 2000 Olympic team, sorry, the 2020 Olympic team under the previous administration, where that grant was doubled from $50,000 to $100,000 when I was the minister. I understand the need, and I hope, I see in the budget again, we have $55,000 budgeted, I'm hoping that we will find ways to increase that funding. $50,000 is certainly not enough. We need to be able to fund training camps. You mentioned the Paris game, and I'll tell you the story of what happened in 2000. Under the leadership of Mr. Desmond Bannister, we spent two weeks in Montalban, France, in training camp. The artists had a chance to sharpen their skills, work together, gel. We then went to the Gold Coast in Australia, traveled to Brisbane, and then we move on to Sydney, Australia. So the fact that the Olympic Games are in Paris this year, I'm hoping that funds will be allocated. Where if we was able to spend time in Paris to go to Australia, we should find funding for those athletes to have training camps in France prior to going to the Olympic Games, where they can focus. Very important. So adequate funding should be put in place to ensure that the transition from the Bahamas to Paris, to Montalban or wherever, takes place. Very important. I live it, so I can speak to it. Proper uniforms, funding, counseling, sport medicine, pre-Olympic competition, again, is very important. Mrs. Mr. Deputy, other sporting agencies are also in need of support. And I did my research, I, when speaking to executives of the Special Olympics, they have advised that funding, again, at the word funding, and recruiting and, re and retaining committed volunteers is a major challenge. They said that consistent government funding as well as sponsorship and donations from non-governmental entities have been challenging, but they appreciate those private companies who donate. Their annual fundraising helps to offset some of the ongoing expenses, 
But the challenge with volunteers of today is that some of the volunteers are committed, and others are looking for a little something. <laughs> oh, yes, they want a little something in their hand. The next two major events on the Special Olympic calendar are the Special Olympic Games 2026 in the US and Special Olympic World Games in 2027. They, they need funding. When speaking to the Swimming Federation, they also raised major concerns regarding the completion of the pool. And I'm happy to hear the minister say that we are well on the way. And thank you very much for acknowledging the greatness of Grand Bahamian swimmers. I'm sure they appreciate all of the compliments and the and fact. They appreciate the historical facts. We love to pop up our athletes, you know, and take credit for their success. But we need to invest in them on the way up. When are we going to become a serious country about our sports industry? I guess we'll have to wait for another new day for that to happen. <laughs> it must be underscored that youth, sports, and culture are three of the major fabrics of our Bahamian identity that requires investment at the highest level. Mr. <coughs> Deputy, I will touch slightly on John Canoe before I close. The Bahamian people want autonomy in that industry. They want to be able to build this for the future of all Bahamians and all they are asking for is support, especially in the family islands. And I remember the member from Marco City really was passionate about the development of John Canoe. And I can see the, the minister now sitting in the chair is also doing his best to ensure that John Canoe continues to grow. We have some, so many talented Bahamians all through, the, through this archipelago and it is simply not fair that only a few of them get recognized and pumped up. Let me ask you a question, why can't they ask this before? Why can't there be, be, be parity in funding for these young canoe groups? Why again, and I know I'm in the Warsaw, I'm in Nassau, why are New Providence Group receiving more seed money than the groups in Grand Bahama and other islands? Why? Why are they receiving more seed money than those groups? They should be receiving the same amount because the point I raised last time, I'm raising it again. In New Providence, this is more a market-driven economy. They have more sponsors that they can approach to get funding. In Grand Bahama, you only have two or three businesses. So when you give them less seed money, they have less sponsors to go to, it's more challenging. So at least give them the seed level of seed funding. It's important because when you, I mean, when you look at the level of Junkin and Grand Bahama now, I mean, we ain't scared. We moving. So, so we need, we need, no, oh, oh, we, we, we'll bring it, we'll, we'll come, we'll bring it. If you ain't scared, bring us over here and, and put us against the best of the best. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's go. Let's bring it. Let's bring it. When I left, no, 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 no. Grand Bahamian Jew came over here. Also the rush. But the point is this. We are trying to drive, we are trying to promote the, the economy. We are trying to bring tourists in. We are, we are trying, we are trying to drive funding into these economies. You give them the same level of funding. Tourists come to Grand Bahama, or if you bring them over here and they see the level of Junkano, they, they will say, well, you know what? Not only is Junkano jumping in New Providence, we could go to Exuma, we can go to Grand Bahama, we can go to Abago. Give the other islands a chance too for them to get some of the tourist do dollars. Promote, pr promote, <laughs> wonderful. No matter who's done under, once the people benefit, I'm happy. So let's push to make sure that we have more funding for these people in. <laughs> Keep funding it. Like I said, it is important, very important, it's very important for there to be priority in funding. My, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, if you have not figured out by now, it is clear that supporting Bahamians, investing in our talent, is how we take back the dream of Bahamianization. And as I close, I spoke about, I spoke in this place more than once, because the funding is an issue, and people are scared of touches about a national sports lottery. And I will continue to advocate, I will continue to push. We bury our head in the sand, you know, we go and we do it secretly, we go overseas, but we're scared to touch it here. This is how we make Bahamians millionaires. This is how we fund our sporting programs, our educational program, our cultural program. This is how we boost our orange economy. So again, Mr. Deputy, we need to stop burying our hands in it. 
Maybe there are certain persons in the industry who we can't touch, but I believe that we should find ways to adequately fund our sporting programs. And as I close, uh, Mr. Deputy, I will say that Bahamians really do not want any new line of taxation. They want real opportunities for growth. They don't want to play duck, duck goose. We all know that. Because if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. If it looks like tax, feels like tax, hurts like tax, it is tax. But you know, now the New York government, they don't call it a tax, you know, they call it a fee. Yeah, yeah call it a fee. But, but it feels like tax, so it must be tax. As always, the official opposition is here to provide bipartisan support for this New Day government, but I will get advice if you will only listen and follow some of them. We are continue. I am continued honored as we are, and grateful for the responsibility to represent His Majesty loyal opposition, and me particularly the people of Central Grand Bahama. I thank the people of the Bahamas, and I thank God for his many blessings yes. over our great commonwealth. Central Grand Bahama, get by rest.